Today on the workbench, we have the Sony 2R29, made in Tokyo, Japan in 1969. It was described as having bad sound, so let's give it some power and see what's up. Maybe we can bring another piece of history back to its full potential. Alright, well, it has uh, maybe a few problems here. Let's replace the caps and uh, see what else we can do. The speaker might be able to be replaced as well. So off we go. Let's take it apart. A few uh, after design fixes, maybe? Who knows? I did manage to find the schematic at radiomuseum.org. These guys are great and you can often find information about these radios there. Here we see we have four caps that need replacing. Before we get started though, something I have learned to do is to mark the current orientation of the capacitors. That way when we pull them out, we can keep track of where they once were in case they just fall to the ground or something. Let's get started. There he is. And he is a 30. Let's compare the one we just took out with the one we're going to put in. So the 30 is measuring 70 with a ESR of 1.6. Obviously not ideal. And here's the one we're going to put in. Which is 34 and 0.67, so much better. Okay, let's get the next guy. He looks like he's here. I think we got him. There we go. Let's measure the 50 microfarad cap we just pulled out. It's 103 with a 5.7. That ain't good. More than double. And the ESR 5.7 is terrible. Let's try the new one. Forty nine point six eight ESR of only point six seven. That's a good close match. All right, we got these two guys up here closely packed together. This might be a little bit difficult, and we see a bunch of extra resistors also there. I think I'm gonna take this guy off just to give a little bit more maneuvering room. I think this resistor is right in the way. So I think we're gonna have to move it a little bit so we can get access to the solder.
So we've been having fun testing these things. Let's try the latest one. And the 30 is 67, almost 68, and a 1.28. Not good. And let's see the new one. Thirty-four and point six, much better. All right, to get this last one out, we're definitely gonna have to move this resistor out of the way. Well, that was a stubborn one. All right. He is a three microfarad. And he's 12 with a 9.9, .9, so really poor. And the new one is going to be 3.16 with the 3.1. All right, now we got to get these resistors back in place. Let's clean up the leads. Speakers degrade over time, just like capacitors do. And the magnet and the paper that was put in here 60 years ago is not the same paper and the same magnet today. So there are these new modern speakers using super modern magnets. And uh, if we put this in, it will sound more like it did back in 1969, and it might even sound better. So let's put this guy in. This new speaker is just a little bit smaller than the old one. So I'm going to 3D print an adapter so that it fits perfectly. Let me uh, unsolder the speaker right now so that I can get this matched perfectly. I'm back with the adapter ring. Now we just need to attach this and then we put it in the radio. Let's mount it to the adapter with a little super glue. We don't need much. That should do it. There's a friction fit as well, so. Wow. I'm glad I didn't make it a tenth of a millimeter more because that just fits.
The last thing we need to do is give this a thorough cleaning. And then, final test. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe. I'll be making more. And if you see anything I missed, again, please leave a comment. I'm here to learn. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next one.